Just a list of MTV shows. <laughs> Maybe it's a great show. Sometimes you'd be like, True Life, I'm a twin! And then other times you'd be like, True Life, I have incurable cancer! Yeah. Room Raiders! Yeah. Room Raiders! Yeah. Next, where they come down, they come out the bus and then they freeze and then it's like, doo -doo -doo -doo. Next! I'm Hannah Kaiser and this is The Bandwagon. Yeah. Last week, Bandwagon the twins, and the update is they are still the best team in baseball. In fact, an entire Bandwagon episode probably wasn't enough to do them justice. We didn't even mention Jorge Polanco, who currently leads the league in batting average, or Byron Buxton, who finally living up to his offensive potential and still doing really, really cool things in the outfield, like this fantastic double play from straightaway center. This is foreshadowing for how much I love the outfield assist. So this week, I'm Bandwagoning the A's. <laughs> The team that is famous for making the kind of budget baseball that we've all come to loathe seem cool and savvy in the early aughts. They actually kind of broke baseball by figuring out and then codifying that you could just not pay top talent and instead use advanced metrics to cobble together a winning team without star power. For better or for worse, the A's are baseball's poster team for replacing the long history of subjectivity with numerical analysis. And for better or for worse, that has changed the game. It's for worse, it's for worse. Baseball is worse than it used to be. But in the A's defense, they have maybe the best excuse for pinching pennies given the state of their stadium. And it's pretty cool that even now that all 30 teams have heard of sabermetrics, they're still finding ways to be successful. Speaking of, the 2018 team won 97 games and had the best second half record in baseball and then lost it in the wild card. Of course, Billy Bean doesn't work in the playoffs. Reasons to bandwagon the A's. For my money, the most memorable play of the 2018 season was an outfield assist by a guy who at the time who had just about a week of major league service. Mariano on the run and he makes the catch. They got a chance to double up Young and the throw is in time and he got it. Oh my God. <laughs> Since debuting last August, Ramon Laureano has baseball's best 15 outfield assists, and every single one of them is a breathtaking highlight. At this point, he's actively dissuading base runners from challenging outfielders by throwing them out every time. Yeah, I actually don't know when the last time was that he did this because everyone has learned that he's so good. This part's interactive. Do you know who led baseball in home runs last year? Oh, Vaughn! No. Jason Giambi. <laughs> okay, yeah, he, he does play for the A's, but not Jason Giambi. Brad Pitt. <laughs> Chris Davis has never been to an all-star game, despite hitting at least 40 home runs in each of the last three seasons and also finishing as high as eighth in MVP voting. What? Yeah, we should start like a get Chris Davis to the all-star game. Hashtag, right insert it right here. Hashtag send Chris Davis to the all-star game. Wait, is this the guy that used to strike out all the time? Or no? Different Chris Davis. Okay. Glad you asked. Hashtag Chris with a K. That would also be his hashtag if he was on the Kardashians. If he was on next, it would be like hitting home runs, not making the all-star game, could be a Kardashian. You know what I mean? He has hit 247 for four straight years before this year. This is not the most impressive thing in baseball, but it is possibly the most amazing thing in baseball. We have charts for that. <laughs> Roll the charts. He's ended the past four seasons with an exactly 247 batting average, Check out what he did on opening day of this year. Chris Davis, who only hits home runs and hits 247, hitting a home run at 2.47 p.m. Ooh. I also have a lot of other really cool, interesting guys. Mark Canna's Instagram is dedicated to his love of food. He retweets Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and he appreciates a good fanny pack, which, I mean, same. Seriously, though, can somebody hook me up with that exact fanny pack? I don't like it, but go ahead and show them Daniel Mengen's catfish hunter-ass looking handlebar mustache. Mustache, yeah! I'm a fan of facial hair, but here's the thing about facial hair. The only islands of facial hair on your face should be your eyebrows. Everything else gotta be connected. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. The A's quite literally wrote the book on succeeding as a small market team and yet still somehow managed to get the surprise Cinderella storyline anytime they're in contention. Just like the Spanish Inquisition, no one expects them. It's just a Monty Python joke that people get, yes? Okay, yeah. let's do fan, not a fan. Yeah! Woo! Monty Python, I'm a fan. Pitchers refusing to come out of games. Max Scherzer refused to come out of a game this week, and he went. <laughs> <laughs> That's him saying no to coming out of the game, but you can't hear the sound. I'm a huge fan of this. This is great. This is cool. Uh, not everyone can get away with it. Pedro. Baseball takes all types, and I like that Max Scherzer is like kind of a crazy person, and he looks the part. So I'm a fan. Also, he struck out the next guy in three pitches looking. Baseball shorts. Now that Henry Pence is on the Rangers, they are stealing his thing, which is the tall socks, and taking it to the extreme. Basically, Brugnet Odor is ruining a very cool thing that Hunter Pence did by pulling his socks so far up that it looks like he's wearing like 
baseball pantaloons. <laughs> not a fan! Not, no, not a fan, not a fan. I'm a fan of this when Hunter Pence does it. Hunter Pence looks good doing this, Regina Dora looks bad doing this. Women have been dealing with this for centuries. You can't wear everything. Doesn't all look good on your body type. Doesn't look good on his body type. Also a circulation problem. Not a fan. Samantha Shaw! Uh, yeah, huge fan of Samantha Shaw, who is not anymore because they've been eliminated, but was crushing the NCAA softball tournament. She is incredible. She's their pitcher and she also hits dingers. Huge fan of her. Have you seen the bat flips? She is incredible. They're not flips. They're not flips. It's like a bat spike. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fan of her. She should maybe consider something else. I'm concerned it's gonna break her nose. And shout out to Natalie Weiner, who's written a ton about her. Go read her stuff on Samantha Shaft. She did a great interview with her. Streaking. I know what you're talking about. I just am not sure how I feel about streaking. Answer the question. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Sports, sh make them as weird as you want. Fan of streaking. <laughs> Free the nipple. Climbing Mount Everest. People keep dying doing that, right? All the time. All the time. Like 11 people died in 10 days on Mount Everest? That might be flipped. Don't, don't, don't use this for your, like, news. news. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about climbing Mount Everest is only rich people can do it, so I don't care if they're dying. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how I feel! Don't put that in! Climbing Mount Everest seems like a perfectly fine way to weed out people with too much money and not enough common sense. Uh, yeah, man. Um, so, yeah. Humble proposal! All right. Let's do it! Yeah, let's do it! Major League Baseball is estimated to be worth about $36 billion, and there are so many ways to feel infuriated at the juxtaposition between that number and the way in which teams in the league are constantly trying to cheap out on the actual talent. Minor league players in particular are famously underpaid, and consider this a blanket appeal to start compensating the young men who make this whole industry possible at a livable rate. But even worse than the long bus rides and ignominious salaries at the various level below the bigs is the fact that minor leaguers aren't paid during spring training. Like at all. In exchange for six days a week of physical labor on hot backfields, they often get housing and food, but no actual money. It's the bullshit unpaid internship of baseball, and it should be illegal. And in fact, it would be, except that MLB throws its massive legal might behind lobbying for minimum wage law exemptions. Why am I talking about this in June? Because even though we're a third of the way through the regular season, there are still hundreds of minor leaguers toiling away at extended spring training camps in Florida and Arizona and not getting paid for doing what is literally their job. These guys spend four months donating their free labor to a multi-billion dollar industry because often that's the barrier to entry to doing what they do at a professional level. With the draft happening right now, remember that after the first round of gauzy ESPN highlights and hefty signing bonuses, comes hundreds of young men who will become the indentured servants to the idea of someday stardom because baseball won't extend their $1,200 a month pittance for an extra few months. Yo. Yeah, right? Yeah. I'm a fan of the A's because they managed to make the like machinations of baseball front offices seem like cinema worthy and sort of sexy. That was, that was mostly bad, Brad Pitt, but still. Fan of streaking, Hunter Pence when he wears shorts, and billionaires should try to climb my Everest because it doesn't work out for them. But actually, if you're a billionaire with money, Oakland needs you. Billionaires should build their own stadiums in Oakland. They desperately need it. Their stadium is full of literally. Episode. Episode. Oh. <laughs>